Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, I would like to continue uh, talking about uh, electromagnetic induction by presenting a couple of problems, simple problems, um, but they do contain some mathematics and uh, again the whole course of this particular course of physics uh, is the course from the looking glass of mathematician. So um, you will just see that mass is really playing a very important role in physics and um, in this particular case you uh, definitely need something uh, in, in calculus. You have to understand and remember what differential is, what integral is, etc. So, um, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on unizor.com and this is the second course. The first was Mass for Teens, that's a prerequisite, and that's exactly what I will be using today. Um, I do suggest you to watch this lecture from the website, uh, from the unizor.com. Um, every lecture on this site has textual notes or explanation, whatever, which is basically like a textbook. So for each lecture there is a corresponding textbook. It's the same. I mean, uh, I'm using maybe some different words, but it's basically the same material. And sometimes text is more precise even than um, whatever I'm talking about here, like in calculations, for instance. Uh, now, the site is completely free. There are no um, uh, advertisings financial strings or anything. Um, also, the site contains exams for those who would like a challenge. And uh, for people who prefer to, to be supervised in some way or another, if there is like a parent or a teacher who can tell, okay, this should be your next assignment, something like this. So there is a corresponding functionality in, uh, uh, in the website, in unisor.com because there are different categories of users. There are uh, uh, supervisors, parents, um, and there are students. There are also teachers who contribute the material, not those who are presenting it, but those who are contributing the material. And they might actually present it as well, like in, in case of myself. Um, okay, so the first problem. The first problem is analogous to whatever I was discussing during the corresponding lecture. It's about um, you have certain magnetic field uniform and these are magnetic uh, field lines which are going that direction. From this part of the space in front of the board towards behind the board. Now, in this space I have the following construction. I have two rails, if you wish. Um, what's convenient is to introduce system of coordinates. Now, this is A, and this is minus A, along the y-axis. And the rails are parallel to the x-axis. And the magnetic lines are parallel to z-axis, which goes perpendicular to the board. Now, these rails are connected here. And, um, there is some kind of a wire or another rail, whatever it is, which also here, but it's sliding this way. Now, so far it's exactly the same as whatever I was explaining during the lecture, but here is the difference. All these four different um, pieces of this rectangle are made of some material which has certain electrical resistance. Now let's assume that these are all of the same material and the same cross-section. So what I have is I have 
uh, lowercase r, which is a resistance per unit of length. So if you have a unit of length, let's say one meter or whatever, so uh, uh, lowercase r is resistance of this one meter of this material, of this wire, if you wish, or a rail. And obviously, whenever this uh, rectangle is created, every uh, side has a resistance which is equal to lowercase r times the length of the side. So length of this side, by the way, is 2a, right? It's a above and a below the x-axis. And same thing as this one, these are parallel. So this is a true rectangle. But this wire or, or rail, whatever, it moves back and forth. Now, here is my problem. Whenever I'm moving this particular wire, um, since I'm moving, crossing the magnetic field lines, there is a magnetic induction. So there is some kind of an electric current. There is electromotive force and uh, on, on the ends of this um, wire. And that's why there is a uh, circulation, there is a uh, electrical current in this particular uh, circuit. Now, if I am moving towards the right, towards increasing of the area of this rectangle, now we know that uh, electromotive force, so U vo voltage, is equal to a rate of changing of the magnetic flux, where magnetic flux is basically the intensity of the field times the area of the rectangle. So intensity of the field is given, B, and the area of rectangle is this, area of the uh, wire frame. So as I'm moving my uh, wire to the, to, towards the right, my, I'm increasing the um, area of this frame, and that's why my phi, my magnetic uh, flux, is increasing, and that's why its first derivative is positive, and then creating the positive voltage. So, what's my problem? Here is the problem. As I'm increasing the voltage, I also increase the resistance of this wire, right? Because resistance is sum of the four sides, resistances, and these two sides are increasing in length. These are fixed and these are increasing. So my problem is, what should be my speed of moving uh, my wire to the right to make sure that uh, the current is constant. So the electric current in this voltage, in this circuit, must be constant. Since I'm increasing the resistance, my voltage, my electromotive force should also increase, which means I cannot just move with a fixed speed to the right, because the fixed speed to the right means my um, area of the rectangle is growing linearly, which means my derivative b is constant, so derivative of phi is, der is b times derivative of s. Uh, now if s is linear, my derivative is constant, so this would be constant, and constant uh, voltage is not what I want because with constant voltage and increasing the resistance according to the Ohm's law my current would go down. I need it to be stable. I need it to be a stable current which means I have to increase the speed of my uh, wire. If I increase the speed my um, area would grow not linearly but faster than linearly how it's a different question, but it should be growing faster than linearly. 
maybe quadratically, maybe exponentially, I don't know yet. We have to make some calculations. So this is the subject of this problem. We have to find out what exactly is the dependency of the speed of time. Speed should increase with the time. So I need a formula. All right, so it's actually not a very difficult problem. All we have to do is to specify exactly what it is. Now, first of all, what is my resistance? Resistance is a function of t, right? Now, let's say x is coordinate of this point, and this is function of t. Well, if x is coordinate, its, resist, its, its first derivative is the speed. So we have to find, actually, this function and maybe its derivative if you want to know the speed as well. So, what is my resistance? Well, if I have this coordinate, um, for simplicity, let's consider this to be at the beginning of coordinates, so it would be easier. So this is my beginning. So this is my beginning position of the wire. So my x of 0 is equal to 0. So in the beginning, these two wires, left and right, are uh, at the same x is equal to 0. And then I start moving. OK, so that's probably enough initial conditions. OK, so r of t is equal to lowercase r times the length. Now, if this piece is x of t, so this is x of t, this is x of t, this is 2a and 2a, right? So my total resistance would be double x of t plus 4a, right? This is a, 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 a. That's my total resistance. Okay. Now, what is my area? Area is equal to x of t times 2a. 2a times x of t. Okay. Now, what is my magnetic flux? Well, magnetic flux, also a function of t, obviously. It's the combination of B times area. So it's 2A X of T. Finally, what is my electromotive force, my voltage? It's a derivative of this. So it's 2A B X derivative. Now we are using the Ohm's law. If you divide voltage by resistance, you will get the current. So let's say I want I0, which is a constant, as the constant current in this particular um, circuit. So U divided by R should be equal to I0 constant. Well, this is an equation. So let's just substitute whatever we have here. So my U is this, 2AB x of t divided by r of t, which is this, r times 2x of t plus 4a. And this is supposed to be constant. What is this? I know all the values. I know a, b, i0, and I don't know the function x of t. This is a differential equation. 
So differential equations were covered in the calculus part of mass routines course on unisor.com. This is a very simple um, equation. So let me just very simply solve it. Okay, so I will cancel two here, and uh, so I will have a b x of t is equal to r x of t plus two a. Okay, is equal to i zero, or. Uh, this thing is a constant, so I'll put it to the right, and instead of x uh, uh, prime, I will use dx by dt, and I also have this x of t plus 2a, and it's equal to I zero times R divided by A B. Equals I will use the letter C just to actually I don't want to use C. I'll use K for simplicity. Because these are all given numbers. This is the current which I would like to have, this is the resistance of the uh, unit lengths of the wire. This is the coordinate of the um, horizontal rails, A and minus A, and B is magnetic uh, field uh, intensity, all given. So K is given. So this is the only thing which I have. Now how to solve these differential equations? Very simple. You move dt to the right and integrate. So on the left I will have dx of t divided by x of t plus 2a. Uh, on the right I have k dt. Now, differential of x of t is exactly the same as differential of x of t plus constant, right? So now I have the same here, and now I can integrate. Now the indefinite integral from this is logarithm of x of t plus 2a. Logar uh, integral of this is equal to kt, plus I have to put constant. Since we are integrating, I can always add the constant. Now, what is this constant equal to? Well, it's very easy to find out. Um, from here, x of t is equal to, well, let's use exponent on both sides, e to the uh, power of this, so I will have on the left x t plus 2a. On the right I will have e to the power of kt plus c, but again this is plus constant, I can, put, I can put constant here, it's just any constant, so this different. This constant is not the same as this one, but it's still a constant, some constant. How to determine? Well, we have initial condition, right? Uh, at t is equal to zero, we have x of zero is equal to zero, right? Remember my wire at, be at the beginning of time is coinciding with, with the left wire. So if I put 0 here, I will have C, and this is 0, so C is equal to 2A, right? So I can safely put it to A, E to the power of KT, where K is this one. So my X of T my x of t is equal to 
of 2a times e to the power of kt which is a0 r divided by a b uh, capital B a b t minus 1 right 2a if it goes to the right I will 2a I will factor out and I will have this e to this power minus 1 this is dependency on t as you see it's exponential dependency which means I have to move with my um, coordinate exponentially increasing now um, what is my uh, speed well speed is the derivative of this right derivative is equal to 2a times derivative of inner function right now inner function obviously minus 1 is uh, disappearing so I have only derivative of this now derivative of e to some power it's e to this power times derivative of the inner function inner function is just a multiplier so I will have I zero R A B times E to the power I zero R T divided by A B. So this is disappearing. And what is my initial speed? Now my initial position is zero, but what's my initial speed? Well, if you put t is equal to 0, this thing would be e to the power of 0, which is 1. So it would be 2 i 0 r divided by b. That's my initial speed. Um, now, um, you can actually check it out. Because um, you have a problem which is kind of investigated before what if you have the wire in the magnetic field and you are moving this wire what what actually happens well if the wire has electric current in it it's a reverse so if you put electric you remember the Lorentz force so if you have a current in the wire this is your wire and you have current, in this case it's I0. I know it's I0, right? Because that's how I specified all the parameters. Now, the length of this wire is 2A, right? So, I have a, a Lorentz force, which is equal to, remember what it is? It was um, the current times length, which is 2A. Uh, times b, right? So this e is the force actually, which moves to the right. You see, we have very, very close formulas here. Um, now, if this is the force, then you can check exactly um, what kind of a um, movement it is if you have the mass, for instance. Um, in this particular case, what I would like to point out is that we are not really far. We are, we are, I mean, the formulas are very, very close to each other. So whenever we are, I'm, I'm starting this movement, um, I have the formula which really kind of resembles um, the Lorentz force, which, which, actu which actually moves the wire to the right. But in this case, we know that the wire is supposed to be moving with a speed, with this speed. And uh, I would like to point out that they kind of correspond. So basically, that's what it is. This is my uh, speed. This is my coordinate of the, of the wire. So again, it's moving exponentially faster and faster. 
speed is exponentially growing. It's not a constant speed. To assure the constant current in the circuit. Well, that's it. So let's go to the second problem. Well, as you see, for a relatively simple physical problem, you do need to know mass. And that was actually one of my main points, that mass is extremely important. You have to be very comfortable with all these tools, differential, uh, integration, uh, very simple differential equation. Um, okay, the second problem. So, what do we have the second problem? Okay, the second problem is the following. If you have a frame which is spinning around the z-axis. Now this is your magnetic field lines. Again, we are assuming uniform. Okay. Actually, in my text I have it parallel to the x-axis, doesn't really matter. This is B. parallel to the x-axis. And this is initial position of my wireframe. Now, what happens, for instance, when you turn on the electric, mo ele electric motor? Well, first it's not moving, and then it's moving faster and faster and faster, and during certain time it reaches its maximum, right, and moves with that angular speed. So the angular speed is changing, that's what I wanted to say. Now, as angular speed is changing, obviously the uh, voltage generated in this magnetic field would be changing. So my question is, if I give you a function of how my angular speed is changing with the time, let's say in the beginning it's zero, and then as we are basically letting this um, frame to rotate, well, it actually generates certain amount of um, electromotive force. So I would like to know what exactly is this electromotive force. So I need to know u of t. Now I have dimensions of the frame. It's a times b, a by b. So basically I have everything, right? I have my magnetic field, I have frame A by B, and obviously I have my area, it's equal to A times B, this is area of the frame, but this is not the area which is supposed to be used when calculating magnetic flux. So to calculate the electromotive force, the voltage, we need to know the magnetic flux, u of t, is equal to rate of change or first derivative of magnetic flux. And magnetic flux, in this particular case, it's not just b times s. It's times s of t, which is the function. You see, whenever we have this direction of the magnetic field lines, my initially my um, frame is parallel to magnetic field lines, right? So nothing is crossed. So whenever I'm trying to 
uh, to move it whenever I'm rotating this, the area through which magnetic field lines are going through is increasing, right? Whenever I'm turning by 90 degrees, so the frame is parallel to the y-axis, the area through which magnetic field lines is the maximum. So from zero, it goes to a maximum. Then as it turns again, it goes to zero again. So my area through which uh, magnetic field lines are going through, this is S of T, it's changing. Now, what exactly is this area? Well, that's kind of obvious. Um, if you will uh, take a look at this from above, you will see, well, in any case, the area is a rectangle with one um, side equal to A and another side at its maximum, it's B whenever it's parallel to the Y, and its minimum is zero. So let's look from from the uh, from the top, from the top. You will see this is B, uh, lowercase B. So if this is direction of the x-axis, and magnetic field lines are like this, then obviously the area of this rectangle is zero. But when I'm turning by angle phi of t, what is my area? It's basically this distance. Right? It's this. Now I can multiply a by this. And what is this? Well, if this is, the whole thing is b, so this is b over 2, so this is, this is phi, so this is phi, um, so this thing is sine. So we have b over 2 times sine of this angle, it's this one, b over 2, times sine of this angle would be this. And we have two of them, so it's b times sine 5t. Okay? And if I will multiply it by a, I will have s of t. So, this is my s of t. This is my uh, magnetic flux. And that's why my electromotive force, which is derivative of the flux, is equal to B times derivative of S, which is A, B, derivative of sine is cosine, times derivative of inner function. Inner function is 5t. 5t is angle of turning. What is derivative? Derivative is angular speed. And we have it. It's omega of t. Okay? So we have all components here. Omega of t is given. B, A, B are given. So the only thing which is not really given is phi of t, the angle, but we have an angular speed. And we have the beginning. I said the beginning is parallel to the x-axis, which means the angle phi is equal to zero, right? So in the beginning, phi of zero is zero. So what is phi of t if I have omega of t? Well, it's integral of 0 to t, omega of t dt. If t is equal to 0, from 0 to 0, obviously it's 0. Now, it's integral because derivative of angular position is angular speed. Same thing as in linear. Derivative of 
the distance is speed, right? So distance in rotation is measured by the angle of turning, or angle of rotation, and angular speed is its derivative. So I'm just reversing this. If this is if this is a derivative of this, then this is integral of that. All I need to do is integrate it with proper um, limits. And this gives me exactly what is the constant uh, of the upper limit. Well, that's basically it. So this is my answer. That's my electromotive force. And it's expressed in terms of angular speed and angular parameters. Well, that's it. Now, these problems are not really difficult from the physical standpoint. I would say it's a little bit more difficult mathematically, and maybe that's why I have chosen them. So, I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. So, you go to unizor.com, choose the Physics 14th uh, course, and there is an electromagnetism chapter in it and this is where then you you have to go to um, electromagnetic induction that's where you will have these problems okay thank you very much and good luck <laughs>